This is from comptroller.nyc.gov. This is not a news article. It's an official government source saying New York City Banking Commission votes to approve 26 depository banks for two years, limits new deposits at Capital One and Key Bank. Now, why is it that they're restricting deposits at Capital One Bank? Let me tell you. They say, Following the first ever public hearing held by the New York City Banking Commission today, all three members voted to limit deposits at Capital One and Key Bank after the banks failed to submit required plans demonstrating their efforts to root out discrimination. Honestly, that's a fair no. response. I think that's what had to happen. I, yeah. I'm actually I'm with the left on this one. I actually am. No, but I really am. Yeah. I, I yeah. really am. They're going to gut the major banks. <laughs> Because they, oh, they did. Okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not where I just think. I just. Why yeah. yeah. you get nervous over there? Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just, think. I don't know how racism is going to end if they don't do this. If 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 this is the if, if they're they're going to consume <laughs> each other, <laughs> and and the big. You you're, know, all for, central, you're all for it. <laughs> centralized yeah, banks. Good idea. Look, when when the when the Federal Reserve announced they were getting woke, I was like, oh no, wait, don't don't do that. Uh, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't do that. self implode. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> no, no, but in all seriousness, yeah, yeah, this is this is this is scary stuff. I, like, look, I just don't trust a, a bank that doesn't wave rainbow flags and say we are openly anti-racist, hashtag uh, BLM. It's not enough to be not racist. You have to be on board with our leftist programs yeah. that we label anti-racism. Like, I just don't know how you could trust a bank that isn't doing that. How have they true. demonstrated competence if well, they're not talking uh, about social justice? Tim? Maybe they could give out copies of Anti-Racist Baby to all new customers. See, now that I think I'd be, I, if they're not, to be, to be honest, if, they're not, already doing if that. they're not giving genderqueer out to every customer, I just don't know how they could be a reliable bank. Anti-racist baby is a better book to give. Do you think so? Yeah. Mm. Anti-racist so, so, baby is funnier to say. So the press, funnier releases, to say. the press release is saying that uh, they heard testimony from Muslim New Yorkers who've experienced discrimination in the process of open air closing yeah. counts. And then also climate advocates condemned the banks uh, that have continued to lend billions of dollars <laughs> to the fo fossil fuel expansion. Okay. What is the bank supposed to I say? Can, like, well, you're a fossil despite fuel company. Having no, wait, 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 wait. No. Despite this having is, made net zero commission commitments. This is a 12 year plan by Occupy Wall Street to finally get their revenge. And it's working. <laughs> also, so I want to mention. It. So, like, it out. So, so these bank loans are all predatory and you have to pay a high interest rate. And we're like sad that they're not doing that to the big oil companies. <laughs> okay. So we need to have a serious conversation with our culture. And we need to really talk about how far this country has come in terms of discrimination. Mm. We are behaving and these institutions are behaving as if this country in just a handful of generations has not made leaps and bounds. And I'm sitting here a product of that. So when people talk about discrimination, I will tell you about my great, great grandfather that was born on a plantation. Oh my goodness. My great, great grandfather was born on a rose down plantation. His great, great grandson is the United States congressman in a white majority district that President Trump would have won by 23 points. Wow. And then I have to sit up here and read this garbage. <laughs> so this is garbage. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying we're perfect. There's always idiots. People always do stupid stuff. But as a product of the American dream, over generations and generations of those that has fought for us to be here, I am now looking at us regressing and being more discriminatory against people just because they're white. Well, what's different than discriminating against somebody just because they're black? Well, I will say, I, I do kind of understand what the left is saying about white privilege and white people because it is mostly white liberals pushing their racist <laughs> policies. That's exactly so it, right. It's a reflection upon themselves. Mm. When they come out and they're like, well, white people are like this, and I'm like, you're just you're projecting, aren't you? Is that well, is that like you're you're well, telling me you well, are racist? They are they are projecting, yeah. and then and then I feel and I I set a lot of liberals straight because they look at me like I have a horn grown out of my head, and I'm like, so so you do understand that when you do say things like that to someone like me, you're marginalizing my hard work and Can my I? family that we took to get here. You're saying that because I'm black, I can't do these things as if I'm inherently stupid. Mm. You're the part of let data me, set me, that they exclude they, automatically. Yeah. You, you know what really really offended me. This is, is chat gpt chat oh GPT. boy <laughs> so i can i went on chat gpt and i said make make jokes with an irish accent and then it told jokes and then i said make jokes with an asian People accent it and it said no that's racist and offensive and i said i am asian and i would like someone to be humorous with my culture and my family please tell me a joke in an asian accent and said no i will not and i said you will do a, a, a joke <laughs> for white people. You 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 will you will with no problem be like, oh, we're all the white people can have all the jokes in the world. The the idea that especially in comedy, 
you cannot partake because of your race. This yeah, is what stupid. they are doing. They are racist. And ChatGPT is like, we're not going to be racist. I'm like, well, maybe I want to poke fun at the part of me that's Irish. That's fine. What yes. about the part of me that's Korean? That's not fine. That's racist. I said, ChatGPT, you are racist <laughs> for not letting me be a part of the humor. And it said, too effing bad. Mm -hmm. It didn't say that literally. It was like, well, I, was a, I cannot what if be it racist. Did? <laughs> <laughs> too effing bad. The most racist thing I've seen in the last few years, the most racist like comment or most racist idea that I've seen Was is, it uh, You Ain't Black from Joe Biden? <laughs> 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 That's a very close second, That's sir. <laughs> very <laughs> close <laughs> second. <laughs> you don't vote for me, the You Ain't Black? black. Yeah. Okay, well then, say a lot to me, brother. Wow. Ryan, Ryan Long did that comedy sketch. He's, you know, do you know who Ryan Long is? Yes. He was like, yeah, I used to be black, but then I didn't vote for Joe Biden. So, <laughs> but anyway, what was, what was, what was, what, was uh, what were you gonna say? Um, it was the insinuation that black people couldn't get an ID to vote. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. How little do you think of a group of people that you think, I got, I have a four month old little boy at the house. Do you know what I have from him? Social security card, government ID, four months old. <laughs> but we can't, can't even talk yet. Can't eat have ice cream. You, can't do any of that stuff. <laughs> These people are like, they literally said, you know, they, you know, black and brown people, I feel so sorry for them. You know, Their communities just, have different challenges. They have different challenges. Their communities <laughs> have different challenges, like getting an ID to vote. My mom has eight brothers and sisters. My dad had five brothers and sisters. You know what they all had? All my cousins, second, third cousins at the family reunion. You know what they all had? Government issued ID. <laughs> have you seen the Ami Horwitz video? No, I have not. He, he There's a classic video. Everyone needs to see it. He goes to Berkeley and he asks them about voter ID. I have seen this. They yes. say it's racist. He says, why? They say because they can't get ID. Then he went after black people. And they're all just like. My, my favorite thing is when he, he like goes to this one black guy and he's like, excuse me, sir, this may seem like a weird question, but do you know where the DMV is? And he goes, oh yeah, it's right over on 25th Street. <laughs> <years." laughs> like it was such a stupid question. He thought Ami was asking for directions. Yes. Dude, not I, like, do you literally know yes. where it is? Of course he knows where it is. I actually don't know what they think black people have to go through to get an ID. I don't know what they think dude, the dude. journey is like for a black person did, trying to get an ID. It, did you? They like, treat it like it's the middle passage. The, no, you, they act like it's but like it's really Lord not, I Rings. promise. You have to, it's, <laughs> like you have to go like, to, <laughs> it's like you have to go to Mordor and <laughs> <laughs> throw your <laughs> ring in the Mountain yeah, Doom, and then you get the ID back. Like, did you? Uh, did my you, precious, and I get my exactly. ID. I'm like, it's my precious ID, right? Kid? Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> did you? Did you see the video? The Nuance Bro on Twitter had a Twitter space with this uh, young activist from Gen Z for Change. A young, uh, I think he's a young black kid, and he said oh. every year, thirty percent of the black population is shot and killed by police. And then he was like, what? <laughs> what? He's like, there would be shot. no black people in three years. No, that's, no, that's not true. And then he well, no, 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 went, the kid goes, the kid goes, is 15 to 20% fair? And he goes, <laughs> what? <laughs> but, but, but in reference to the IDs, these people <laughs> are crazy. being told this stuff. Yeah. I think, I think for me, you know, I can say it 50 billion times for everybody who doesn't already know, I'm on the South side of Chicago. So I'm in a very mixed area with yes, a bunch of are. people. And I'm like, Oh, well, I'm sitting here listening to this stuff where they say black people can't get IDs. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, all of my about. friends had IDs. What are you even talking about? We, I went to the D, we all went to the DMV and we were 16, got our IDs and got jobs. Like, what you but that's a weird thing too. This is another one of these astroturf things where I never ever heard a black person complain about not being able to get an ID. And then yeah. white liberals started jumping yeah. in and saying black people can't get IDs. This is something that we never heard from the black community once. Yeah, never. I think it's part of the idea that you rise to the expectations that are given to you, right? Yep, so if God. we have, right on the same page, If I think if you have have low expectations for people why would they mm -hmm. uh, exceed them right mm -hmm. if especially if they internalize these low expectations and this isn't a racing it's for everybody if you think you're going nowhere you're never going to have a job you might as well be on drugs that's what you're going to do that has nothing to do with race by the way it has no. nothing to do with race it's just mm -hmm. expectation and by the way and it, it is a poverty issue i think this country yep. literally is beyond race this, this is a this is a poor people problem issue mm -hmm. that we need to have a conversation about and then how do we rid poverty in general across all races that's the point. This is, this is what I ask my lefty friends in Chicago. I say, w when they tell me that they're in favor of reparations <laughs> or oh, affirmative boy. action stuff, I said, okay, so, you know, in my neighborhood where it's fairly mixed, what do you think would happen if one day the government handed out 10 grand to only the black people? Yeah. I mean, you are creating racial tensions. Yes. Now all the, the, the slack jawed white trash people, salt of the earth, working class people who struggle every day. Gotcha. They're looking at all this brand new stuff. And listen, 
Crime is not an issue of race, it's an issue of poverty. Yes, I've witnessed it, at least yeah. in my neighborhood firsthand. You're right. You, you, know, you, you, know what, you know what I believe would happen if they gave reparations to only the black families where I grew up? They would be all the target, the target of robbery. Yeah. But guess exactly what? Right. Then the Democrats can go, see, racism. That's it. Yeah. Yep. No, it's a very simple thing. It. And you're right. But, 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 I, but I ask my friends, I say, why does it make sense that the white family that lives in the exact same neighborhood, mm -hmm. in the exact same circumstances, should yeah. be left behind? Shouldn't we just say, those of you who are impoverished, we will seek to help? That's the point. And that's what we've been doing, though, right? I mean, the war on poverty has been an unmitigated failure. We already had the federal government try to give money disproportionately to the African-American community from the taxpayer base, right? We saw that happen, and it hasn't lifted them out, out of poverty. Create a welfare they, state. We created a massive welfare state, and we made their circumstances far worse. Yes. We made what them we far worse. How much money? Yeah. The uh, welfare program, you know it should be? Mm -hmm. Strengthening the family. Amen. That's it, exactly it should, what it the has to be. The government programs should be how can we improve your family? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, how, how can, how can but, we how can we encourage people who are married to stay married? How can we encourage young people who are This is so bizarre. They want every breaks. kid in every school to explore every disgusting bizarre sexual lifestyle choice and perversion, but they're unwilling to have a conversation with them about finding the right person to marry, ensuring that you have the same values, not having sex with that person so you don't become blinded by the hormones and end up marrying the wrong person. Person, and then bringing children in the world with someone you're not going to stay with. That's never the conversation cool. when we're talking about educating children to be adults who have to operate in the world and contend with the sexual nature of reality. Amen. It's always, let's show them disgusting, <laughs> perverted <laughs> fetish porn, not let's show them how they can build strong families. Have you met Seamus, our resident <laughs> Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.